we have a tracking problem. So I tried making an effect. In order to do that, I had to track my footage. I was having trouble with the track. So what did I do? I did what any professional would do. I turned to YouTube. But YouTube failed me. All I could find were tutorials on how to track nice open footage with lots of contrast and a million points. But what if your footage sucks? Like, a lot. So that's what we're going to be going over today. Some of the tips and tricks I picked up on how to track bad footage. Let's get into it. All right, first off, we need to talk about what is bad footage. So I have a clip here. Now let me show you why this is bad. So this is me, I'm walking, and I just have the camera tracking behind me. Don't ask me how I got this footage. Uh, the things we do to get the shot. So this footage is basically terrible because one, I'm in it. I'm taking up about a third of the frame here. That doesn't help me. I don't want to track myself. I want to track the room. Next up, there's basically no color differentiation. There's some, but it's basically white on white. And so there's no contrast to grab tracks. There's also only a few things that the track can grab. A lot of the stuff hanging on the walls is going to be almost perpendicular to the camera. So it's not going to produce a very good track. And it's really dark. So there's a lot going on here that makes the track really, really hard. So first we need to prep our footage to be tracked. And this is super important. If you don't set up your footage correctly, it'll make it really hard to track later on. So I'm gonna hold Alt and drag it down because I don't need the audio for this. I'm just gonna trim it up some. One of the main things you can do to make your track a little bit easier is have smaller clips. Two things you wanna do here. If you have an effect and you don't want it to take really long to render and you only wanna use Fusion a little bit, make your clip shorter. But if you're having a bad track, sometimes you need to make your clip longer so there's more information for it to track. So I'm gonna leave this pretty much the full length to get the best data. And here's the other thing I need to do. So this is a shot in 60 FPS. My timeline should be in 30 FPS. So I'm gonna make sure my timeline's at 30, it is. So I need to convert this clip to 30. Although it'll play back at 30 frames per second on the timeline, if I bring it into Fusion, it will have all of those frames. So I need to convert this so I have fewer frames. So this is kind of the contradictory part of it. If you want a better track, you need longer footage, but a better track will also be made having fewer frames. So longer footage, but fewer frames will give you a better track I've found. The easiest way to convert this, I'm just going to convert this to a new compound clip. So now I only have about 300 frames to go over instead of like the 600. And it starts at frame zero, which is kind of handy for watching things. So there are a few more things that we'll want to do. Um, first is we want to stabilize this footage. It rocks back and forth pretty badly. I want to stabilize it. It actually helps. And I'm not sure what order this does it in, but it seems to stabilize it first. And then when I go into Fusion, it helps it out a lot. So I'm going to go to stabilization and you can try different methods to see. Similarity actually worked the best on this clip for me. So I'm going ahead and stabilize it. All right, now that that's done, now I can go into Fusion. Now before I start tracking, there is one other thing that I need to do. I need to change this orientation. When I add in a transform, I'm going to add in this background, throw on a mask, and I'm going to just pipe that in there because my footage is slightly crooked and that will affect the track. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this rectangle and I'm going to back up my footage just a little bit. Find a good point where I can see that wall pretty good. Move this over. You can see that it's crooked. I'll click on the transform and I will change this angle. Zoom in and just check how this looks. And that looks pretty straight. So now I'm missing some of these edges there. So I'm going to have to increase the size just a little bit. And now it's filling my frame. Now I can just get rid of this for now. I'll just leave it off to the side. The other thing that I may need to do, I don't need to do it on this footage because it's pretty straight, but you will end up with lens distortion on some clips. Let me show you how to do that with lens distortion. So go ahead and hit control space. We're going to type in lens. What you want is this lens distort. I think this is an extra effect that I got, this lens distortion. But lens distort, go ahead and you can go to the lens distortion model and you can go to distort and you can see if your footage was warped around the edges, that you could undistort this. And it will change your footage somewhat. So you would, what you would need to do is undistort it, do the track, and then put distortion back on essentially. That is the correct way to do it. But since my footage is basically straight, I'm gonna leave it off for now. But I wanted to point that out to you in case your footage is crooked. Let's get rid of this stuff. What we need to do is hit control space and find the camera tracker. What I'm gonna do with that, I'm just gonna branch off on this. I don't need it directly in the way. I'm also going to add in a Merge 3D. And this just allows me to view it. Now, you won't be able to pipe this in. This is an image output, but you can grab this tab here and then it'll go in. And then you can bring it up in your viewer and you can see where your camera's at. So let me show you what happens here. I'm just gonna do it, track it right now to show you what a bad track is like. All right, so we have 
488 tracks during the entire course of this footage. And the first thing you notice is it's tracking everything, including myself, and that is not good. So the first thing we need to do is mask out myself so that I can get a better track. Grab a mask, pipe that in. I'm going to go back to the beginning and I'm just going to draw around myself. All right, it doesn't have to be great. It just has to mask me out so that there are no tracks. And then all I'm going to do is I'm just going to go through this footage until I go out. I'm going to grab all of this and it should add in keyframes automatically. If I grab a corner down here, I can just do that. Scrub through the footage. If you need to make it more detailed, you can. So I'm going to click on this tracker. I'm going to click on solve. So this, this is the solve of the previous one. This is without the mask. I want to show you what it looks like. All right, now if we look over at our average solve error, it's almost 35 pixels. That's terrible, frankly. Uh, what you want to be shooting for is under one pixel, really under 0.5. And if you want a really good track, 0.2 or 0.1 is what you're shooting for. So as small as we can get this, the better. This is not an acceptable track. Under 0.5 is acceptable. I'm going to go reset this and I'm going to track again. This time it'll, it has the mask on it and we'll see what we get. All right, that's done. What I need to do, and you can see there's a problem here, is it's still tracking me. This mask needs to be inverted. What you can do on this camera track is enable live preview before you track it, and that'll often show you where those trackers are gonna show up. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. But I'm gonna go into my mask, I'm gonna click invert, and then I'm gonna retract that. All right, now you can see that I'm out of it. But before I click on solve to see my error, I just wanna scrub through my footage and make sure that there aren't any trackers on me because sometimes it, there's a variance in where the tracks can be. So sometimes it'll still stick to you. That looks pretty clean. So we're going to solve and there aren't enough tracks. You will run into this. Since I masked out so much, there are, has to be at least eight tracks to go from frame to frame. So what are we going to do? Here's what I discovered and I haven't seen anybody else mention this but there's a trick. You can use some effects to help your tracking. There are two things I'm gonna do that are really going to help me out. One is I'm gonna throw on an edge detect. This is normally an effect, just makes a neat little effect going on, but it actually really helps with tracking. So if I go ahead and grab my edge detect, I turn the brightness all the way up, you can see it gives me a lot better contrast on a lot of these details and takes out some of the noise. The other thing I can do is I can change the color. So right now we're on a Luma track, but I can track different channels. And the easy way to do that is to go to this viewer and you can look at it. So this one looks pretty noisy. It's not great. Blue's pretty dark. It's not great. I know from experience that green gives me the clearest contrast. So if I were to track green, I'd have a much better track. But let's take these one at a time and just see what happens. So I'm just gonna keep it on Luma and I'm just gonna use the edge detect. So let's go ahead and track that. Let's go ahead and look at our solve, still not enough. But let's go ahead and track green, still not enough, 420. So we're increasing our tracks, not enough. What we need to do is change this minimum feature separation. And I found changing this from 0.05 down to 0.15 helps a lot. Let's look at our solve almost 2,000 tracks now. So we have like four times more than what we just had. So there's a lot better features, but just to show you that these, this edge detection is helping a lot, I'm gonna reset it. I'm gonna do a Luma and let me show you what it looks like without the edge detection. So only 1,000 tracks. So those two little features almost doubled the amount of tracks that we can have. Let me show you with just the green on. So the green basically did nothing by itself, but if I add in the edge detect, we get all that information back. So that edge detect is helping out a ton. Almost 1900 tracks, some of them didn't quite make it back in. Let's look at this, our solve error, way low, 0.46. That's a pretty good track. It's way lower than the 35 pixels that we had before. We can refine this a little bit further, however. So if you scrub through your footage, you might notice that there are some red marks. And if you take out some of the red marks, it'll actually make your solve error better. Now, solve error does not mean that it's a good track. It, it's just a precision measurement. It just means that all your points are closely related. It doesn't mean that it's a good track. And the other thing you can watch for in this Merge 3D is let's change the perspective to top. I like to look at this because not only will it show me all my points, it'll also show me my camera track. And this is looking pretty good, but I can get a better error and have a bad track. Sometimes you'll see a lot of this stuff bowed out a lot. It'll jump around. And let me show you that. I will go through this and I will, let's select tracks 
that are less than 15, have a maximum solve error of around 0.1. I'm going to go ahead and delete the tracks that have a higher error. Let's change that to like 0.2, quote unquote bad tracks. I'll go ahead and solve this. In this case, it's improved. If I keep lowering it too much and get rid of too much data, even some of the red ones and orange, you see that my solve error is lower, but it's introduced a lot more of these points that are really rough. And you will find tracks that are actually really low, but they might have a point that's like way out there and it jumps around. So getting rid of some of the quote unquote bad tracks can sometimes lead to bad data and a bad track. And you'll notice that if I delete some of these, like maybe I get rid of some of the yellow ones, or I get some of the red ones, questionable tracks. So a lot of these were green before, but since I deleted more of the data, these have now changed to yellow. So be careful going just off of solve error. It doesn't necessarily mean you have a good track. That's why I like to take this top view and kind of see where it's at. And you notice that I can move points too. I can move points, I can even delete points if I have a really bad track and that can help smooth it out sometimes. I don't recommend it, you try and track it as best you can without doing that, but if you need to and it's going to help, you can modify this. So what can I do with this now? Um, I can get rid of this edge detect, I don't need it anymore since it's already been tracked and it's already been solved. What I can do is I can export this data. Now all I need to do is basically just click export what it's going to give me, it's going to give me the camera, it's going to give me the points, it's going to give me the ground plane. I like to leave this attached because then I can update it. You can update it straight from there. So if I need to retract something, I can update it. The other thing I want you to notice is now you can kind of see this ground plane. So if you want to know if you've got a good track, your camera might be rotating. So I like to look at this and make sure that it's staying parallel to the ceiling basically. So if I go through my footage, I can see that this is staying mostly parallel. What might happen is if you get to the end, you can see that it changes and it might slope off slightly. So you may have to retract something. You may have to adjust some points or change your effect to compensate for that. So if I go to the end here, we can go ahead and use this background and rectangle again. Plug that in, go ahead and change it this time. That's pretty straight there, but you notice that this is sloping slightly. I'm not sure that there's a good way to correct that other than trying to get your solve error down and make it a little bit better. But these are some of the tips and tricks that I picked up and whatever you need, you can just plug right into this Merge 3D, 3D text or what have you and it'll follow along your track. I will be back with more on this and some more effects and tracking. Take it easy, we'll see you in the next video. So we have a problem, a traffic problem, because they won't be quiet. There go the planes again. Can you hear the siren? <laughs> this is ridiculous. Did I mention I live right next to a highway, an airport, and a railroad station? <laughs> Just not fair. Why?